Hey everybody, welcome to Friday Fruit Clips, episode number 19. This, of course, my weekly series where we expose false prophets, false teachers, spiritual bullies, those who pretend to love Jesus Christ, but they don't. We love Jesus Christ in truth and sincerity, so we want to make sure that we stand in opposition of these frauds. So we'll play some clips and expose them. We'll comment on everything. You can see for yourself. The evidence is all there. So having said that, strap in. You ready? Here we go. All right, first up, we've got Kenneth Copeland. Now, normally I try to keep things light while I poke fun at the absurdity of false prophets. Uh, but these clips of Copeland are a little more serious, sadly. These clips actually angered me quite a bit. But that's pretty standard when it comes to Kenneth Copeland. This man is one of the most blasphemous heretics on the face of the earth. And um, I'm quite convinced, in fact, that he is actually demon-possessed. But in this first clip, he's telling the story of when he had some heart issues and he was going to start a new exercise regiment. And that he really, you know, wasn't digging that. He wasn't liking it. Um, so he tells the story, but it's what he says at the end when he finishes up. God apparently comes and says something to him. And that's what I want you to focus on. So this runs about 60 seconds. Give it a listen. Things like this, and there's weights down here, and you pull this, and you start working these muscles here. And I'm telling you, I'm feeling good. Great. And I reached up there and grabbed this, and I said, my God, I hate this. Mm. I physically felt that spirit leave the, off my body. Yeah. He wasn't in me. He can't get in me. I opened the door to him to even be there. And I repented. I said, oh, Lord, I repent. I love it. I love this room. And I enjoy it in there. I get in there and just start working out. And I got in there one day, and the Lord said, I sacrifice your, my body for yours, and I thank you now that you're sacrificing your body for mine. I now, you can try, but you'll not be able to process the level of blasphemy that Copeland here just spoke. God, of course, did not say this. Copeland is drowning in narcissism. He will pay dearly for eternity for these types of things that he consistently says unless he repents soon. To think that the God of all the universe, the God of all creation, would thank the creation is absurd, but you see it more and more, don't you? You always hear these stories by these false prophets, these false teachers where, oh, hey, Jesus showed up. He just showed up to thank me. He wanted to give me thanks. Like Julie Green, when she gave the false prophecy that God was thanking Donald Trump for his sacrifice. Thank you for your sacrifice. Thank you for your sacrifice. It is just incredible that, that God shows up and thanks humans it is such blasphemy. But he sells this fantasy to his audience and they believe it. And it's very sad. They, they think this man is that great because they allow themselves to be sold by him. All right, I forgot to mention that this these clips of Copeland were from recently, 2023 Southwest Believers Convention. You can see the title there, just a couple of days ago. Uh, so there you go. So this next clip, uh, it was very disturbing for me to see. Uh, in fact, when I saw this clip, I cried, and I'm going to show you what I'm talking about. So we're going to play this uh, next clip, and we'll comment as we go. I love your smile. I, I, saw, I saw you smile back over there a while ago, and it just reached out and grabbed me. What's your name? Ailey. I'll tell you what. In the name of Jesus. Oh, glory be to God. Ha, 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 ha,
All right, so very strange. Copeland apparently calls an audible here. Going off script, he walks out into the audience, telling a paralytic named Haley, well, he loves her smile. And then he uh, stands in front of her awkwardly, begins to speak in creepy tongues. He lays hands on her head. He says, glory be to God. He pretends like he's getting information or something. And then out of nowhere, he just does this creepy laugh. And then he just moves on. It's unbelievable. When I saw this clip, I immediately felt for Haley. I felt for her and, and I actually wept. Um, she's sitting amongst many who are handicapped. And I have no doubt they came here in hopes of a miracle, in hopes of getting healed, because somebody probably told them that, oh, there's this great man of God named Kenneth Copeland. And so they came with hopes, but they didn't know that, no, he's not a great man of God. He's a con artist. He's a devil. And so what they saw was Kenneth Copeland put on a performance. That's all he could do. Again, because if you play this back, Copeland doesn't actually pray for Haley. He doesn't say anything resembling an actual prayer because he can't. He has no authority in Christ. He has no authority in Christ, and he knows it. So he pretends, and they had to have all known this by the time this ended here. I'm going to let this play out, um, and it's very sad. He pretty much does the same thing all the way through. But we're going to watch this to the end. And please stay with me here because it becomes, it actually becomes even more painful when I show you the ending here. So stay with me. Mary. Mary. What's your name? Now there's a good looking man. <laughs> I see that smile too. <laughs> What's the matter with that? I keep spraining it since I had rhabdomyolysis. Not anymore, you don't. That's right. Jesus yeah. bore yours. It doesn't belong to you. <laughs> Glory. He bore our sickness. He bore our sins in his own body on the tree. That we being dead to sin says live under righteousness by whose stripes you were healed. So it doesn't belong to you. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. I mean, somebody praise God. Somebody praise God. Yeah, it was right, right, right back in, in. All right, now pay attention. He is going to begin telling you a new story here. So listen close. An area right over there. And we had finished up that morning and started to leave. And the Lord pointed her out to me. And uh, she had on dark glasses. And so I, I stopped and, and, and she was in a chair and I got down there in front of her and I said, may I do what Jesus did? She said, by all means. So I took her glasses. Well, I found out later it was her granddaughter. I didn't know who it was then. I handed those glasses and I went, and put it on her eyes and just held them there until the Lord gave me a release. And I took them away and I looked her right in her eyes and I said, what do you see? She said, I see you. 
All right, so try to understand what you just saw. This is why I wanted to play this clip for you. Copeland rolls through several handicapped people, not even actually praying for even one of them to be healed. And perhaps being in fear of losing the audience or being exposed in front of them for the fraud that he is, uh, he immediately realizes this as he walks back up to the podium. Well, oh, what am I going to do? Well, I got to dig out a story. Why does he have to dig out a story? Because stories work on the brainwashed and gullible followers. Storytelling works. He knows he might be in a bit of trouble, so he pulls out a story and tells you of something miraculous that happened at a different time somewhere else. You weren't there. You didn't see it. But let me tell you this story because I know you're going to believe it. And of course they do. So the crowd cheers and he's back in their good graces. Couldn't do it today, of course, right? Never, it's never today. So you just have to listen to the stories. And uh, as he does tell the story, whammy, the crowd's ears are tickled and he's back in business. And it's so unbelievable that this works, but it does. And that's why Kenneth Copeland is the best of storytelling false profit frauds. And sadly, he will be allowed to continue to do this probably until the day he dies because his audience refuses to hold him accountable, even to the point of not even saying one prayer of healing over the many handicapped people that he just walked through. Unbelievable. All right, so next up, we're going to look at one Vicki Parnell. Now, Alabama Woodsman's done a couple of videos on her, so make sure you check those out. But she is a confirmed false prophetess. That's not even a question. Vicky's one of these who says that she can bind devils and demons to be reserved in chains until Judgment Day. But doggone it, somebody keeps unbinding them because they keep getting out. So we just we just don't know how that is. But so she's a binder and she likes to tell you that. Says some really weird prayers. A lot of them are completely unscriptural. And so what I'm going to do today is I'm going to present you a clip. I'm, I'm going to present it to you as a challenge. See if you can listen to this all the way through. And the reason is we want to expose this because silly people are inundating the Internet with silly doctrines. She is nowhere near true prophecy. So we want to continue to be in opposition to people like this. She's a fraud. So listen to this clip. See if you can make it through, and we'll be back to comment in just a minute. All right, this word again came at six on six five twenty two today at three eleven p.m. and the title he has given me. Countdown, it begins. Take cover. This word came through while I was in intercessory prayer. He will use the nuclear weapons on the people of the Ukraine. Countdown, countdown, countdown. Countdown, countdown, countdown. It's the final countdown. Out of time, out of time, out of time. Prepare to take cover. Prepare to take cover. Prepare to take cover, daughter. Prepare to take cover in me. It begins. It begins. It begins, it begins now. Countdown, countdown, take cover, take cover, take cover, take cover, take cover, take cover, take cover. Now, 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 daughter, now. Run, take cover, run, take cover. Run, take cover. All right, so congratulations if you made it through. Now remember, Vicki wants you to believe that these are the words of God Almighty. And keeping in mind that this alleged prophecy was given over a year ago, while Vicki fake cries, I wonder how many of her brainwashed followers locked themselves in their basements because, well, Vicky told them that God said, now, 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 take cover, take cover, now. And it went on and on. 
So this is the power, believe it or not, it's sad, this is the power of social media. Social media dingbat profits. And some of you might think I'm being mean. I'll tell you what's mean. Spiritual bullying. When you get your followers convinced that God is speaking through you, and then you tell them all to go take cover because it's all going down now, and people change their lives because of your words. They change their lives. How many people didn't go into work? How many people, you know, like I said, locked themselves up in their house, didn't talk to relatives, didn't do anything? Well, I don't know. You, you guys can kind of work that all out. We've seen twilight zones like this, right? So, but this is the power of social media. This is the power of false prophecy, sadly. And do you understand that this is just absurd? It's just spiritual bullies and crackpot lunatics who make their livings lying in the name of Jesus Christ. And again, look at the performance. Not a tear. Let me see if I can come down here in real time here. Look up. I'm going to wait till she looks up here. Until she looks up. Look at that performance, though. This is performance. As she sits at her kitchen table with the camera on. Do you see any tears there? Do you see any tears? No. Are her eyes even red? <laughs> the answer is no. Her hair is red, but her eyes look pretty good. Congratulations, Vicki. Your alleged prophecy from over a year ago for people to take cover and to, I don't, can't remember what else, you know, lock yourselves up or hide or whatever, none of it panned out, and it's been well over a year. So Vicki Parnell is a fraud. And again, go check out Alabama Woodsman. He did some excellent videos on her, as well as some other people. She is a false prophet. She is a social media bully. Stay away from her. All right, so next up we've got Kim Robinson. Now, Kim is a blaspheming storytelling fraud who tells and sells her fantasy stories of at-will trips to heaven where she very often describes what I would call Fabio Jesus, right? She's got this relationship with Jesus. It's not the Jesus of the Bible. She's made up a fantasy land, again, what I would call Fabio Jesus, or, you know, Jesus is my boyfriend type fantasy. And uh, she's a bit of a pervert, <laughs> and, and I'm not exaggerating. In the past, uh, she's told us stories about, you know, walks with Jesus, motorcycle rides with Jesus, you know, running her fingers through his soft, plush hair. And, you know, I forget her exact words, but it was very demented and perverted. Uh, and so she's back and she's got some more stories. And uh, trust me, she doesn't disappoint. So we're going to listen to a couple of clips just to further expose her as the false prophet and uh, liar that she is. Take a listen. You know, one of one of the things that he may take you to do is, you know, we were I was praying and then I was instantly in Hawaii and I didn't have to go through security check. I didn't have to have pre check. I didn't have to. Nice. You know, I didn't lose any flies. My flights weren't delayed. I was just there. I just instantly in Hawaii, you know, because he didn't have time for that. You know, we don't either, but he doesn't either. <laughs> you know, he just puts you where he needs you to be for whatever reason. And so Jesus and I were walking on this beach in Hawaii. What in the, oh, yikes. So yeah, uh, Kim's own personal fantasy Jesus. Again, not the Jesus Christ of the Bible. I'm not kidding. This is sick. Because the way that she describes this unbiblical Jesus uh, he's like this billionaire nice guy who just takes her all over the world and, of course, up into heaven as well. And so they have things like date nights and fun days and everything's fun, fun, fun. And it's just ridiculous. In this particular video, you can see the title. Well, he took her to Hawaii to teach her something. Special mission where she helps a child. But, of course, you know, walking on the beaches and so on and so forth. The good thing is this particular Jesus, he's got some good, pretty good connections here. No check-ins or delays, stuff like that. Her Fabio Jesus has got connections, so she just walks right through. But it's all just so utterly blasphemous, and sadly she has a cult following. These carnal-minded women who love to hear these sick stories, 
And they, uh, they also wind up trying to step over into heaven, you know, just like Kim, at will. And um, instead of reading the Bible and realizing the holiness of God Almighty, uh, Kim is sowing fantasy, sick, twisted, demented things. I'm trying to be nice about this, but there's really no way that I can be. So it's just a bit disgusting. Let's listen to one more clip here. I was praying also. Um, I was I was praying and I was, you know, just worshiping. I could feel his presence and I could just feel that just, the, you know, I could feel his presence. And Jesus mm. said, open your eyes. And I'm like, oh, yeah. <laughs> so in the, because your spirit has eyes. Yes. And so I guess I was I was in heaven with my eyes closed. So once I opened my eyes, I saw Jesus and I saw him so clearly it was like clearer than normal. And he, he was he was riding. He was on a horse and he said, come on. And so I jumped on Pale, which is my horse in heaven that you guys have heard me talk about before. And I jumped on my horse and pet his super soft hair. So the horses in heaven, their hair is so soft and they don't stink. You know, they, they don't have that horse scent. No There's manure behind them. To no, no it's, you never have to go to the bathroom <laughs> in heaven. <laughs> ah, gotcha. Yep. Yeah, that's yep. yeah, worth getting saved for right there. <laughs> Hallelujah. And then, right. And so we were riding. So Jesus had his horse and I had I was on pale, my horse. And we yeah. were riding through this field of bright colored flowers. Mm. And it was just a field. And if you can just imagine just a field full of bright flowers and you're on a horse and you're riding and it's just so beautiful. And it was just so peaceful. And the colors in heaven are mm. so bright. We got off and we held hands and we began walking, you know, through this field of flowers. And all of a sudden it starts like raining flower petals and the flower petals in heaven, they're thick. And they're so soft. All right. So what, what do you guys think? Do you believe, Kim? I, it's, it's fantasy. It's fake. Really? Do you believe? Oh, yes. Just me and Jesus just riding horse. He said, come on, let's go ride horses. And I said, well, there's my horse. His name's Pale. And he stays up in heaven. So we just start riding through flower fields of flowers and patches and Oh, the, the horse's hair is just so soft. And you know, there's a remarkable thing up in heaven. The horses, they don't they don't go duty up there. So that's pretty neat. No more smelling. So I, I like that. And and then when we're done riding, we me and Jesus get down, we're just holding hands. Cause you know, that's the way we roll. Jesus is like that. Jesus is my boyfriend up in heaven. Jeez, good grief. And so <laughs> I'm so sorry. It's just unbelievable that anybody believes this. Good grief. Look at this one over here. Oh, wake up, lady. I know it's a job, but my goodness. If you're a woman out there uh, or whatever, this is not real. Read your Bible. What she's describing is shockingly and utterly unbiblical. All right, so please stay away from Kim Robinson. You got it. She got that preaching suit on today. You know, I heard something when Robin was do, uh, receiving the offering that the way I, I saw it, it was like something just, it's like it slammed down and locked into position. It's like something just came down and locked. That there will come a day when people will wake up. You will wake up one morning and, and there will be massive amounts of wealth has been transferred into other places. Now, did you hear what Robin said there? As thousands and thousands and thousands are in the midst of watching him and possibly giving him and his church a donation, he comes out and says, you know, I saw a vision. Something came down and just slammed. And I saw when a day is coming, when you're going to wake up and you're just going to see all this wealth, right? So this is what we've heard so far. 
right? Now watch this, what he does here. And I saw it like big blocks of something. It just slammed down. And people are going to go, in the body of Christ, this happened all at once. This just happened all at once. And this is what I heard. You be sure you sowed for that. All right, did you get that? Now that's the key right there, people. Pay attention. This is Gypsy Swindling 101. Make sure you sow for that. What does that mean? Well. Robin's front and center, right as the offering is being taken. And here comes the daughter. She's about to start unbiblically teaching. And here comes Robin. And he tells of a vision that he saw where, what, giant things were coming down and locking into place. And, well, this was wealth. This is the wealth transfer. And it's almost here. It's coming. It's right around the corner. Are you ready? <gasps> the check's in the mail. Can you feel it? Here it comes. Christians are going to be blessed with just waking up and just checking their bank accounts and there's just tons of wealth there just magically appeared and you can be the benefactor. But, ooh, you better make sure, yes, you better make sure that you sowed in for that. And that means his church. There's a condition here, people. If you want to receive the fantasy wealth transfer that's soon to come, well, you ain't getting a dime unless you sow into it. And that means give Robin a whole bunch of your money right now, even if you're broke. Again, gypsy swindling at its best. So notice that he didn't tell you this before church started. Didn't tell you after. He's telling you right when the offering's being taken. So coincidence? I think not. Here's Robin Bullock, otherwise known as Frankenstein Tombstone. Unbelievable. All right, so that's going to do it for this week's episode of Friday Fruit Clips. Thanks for joining me. Remember to read your Bible always. Stand in the truth of Jesus Christ. Stay away from the false prophets. Stay away from the false teachers. In Jesus' name, until next time, God bless.